a rectangular beam column is it's a structural element that combines both properties of a beam and a column. So we're going to have a load here. This is going to be 10 pound force this way in the down direction and then axially. Okay, so this one, we need that to with, be able to withstand 25 pounds force. And we're going to have uh, the width and the height of this. I'm going to name this one B and then D. Just W is is uh, going to be like the weight of this. So I'm going to change that to instead of width. Okay, and then the length, um, I'm going to say that's 50 inches here. And we need to optimize this to be able to have minimum overall weight. So what we want to do is to minimize the weight. And then we're going to be subject to some constraints. And uh, we're going to assume that the beam can only bend in this direction. And also there's a buckling as well, potential buckling. Uh, so only in the X and Y direction, we're assuming that this direction, the Z direction, there's no bending in that direction. So two-dimensional analysis here. So it's made of steel with a density of 0 0.3 okay, pounds per inch cubed. And then it has a Young's modulus of uh, 30 times 10 to the 6 PSI and yield strength of 3 times 10 to the 4th PSI. Beam must be at least 0.5 inches wide, and the width must be less than twice the depth. Okay, so here's our depth here, and there's our width. So those are going to be the design that we're going to use to be able to determine what is the minimum weight. Okay, so that's what we're trying to minimize. Now there are some equations. We want to optimize this to minimize the weight, the compressive stress due to the load in the y direction, okay, this is the compressive stress, that's going to be equal to PY um, over WD. We're going to just use uh, B there instead, just for our nomenclature. And then the compressive stress due uh, it to uh, in the x direction, okay, here's our compressive stress, that's going to be PX, our load. Uh, divided by two times the moment, okay, in the um, the moment of inertia, and that's going to be equal to six times that load times the length divided by b times d squared. All right. So then we also, when the the length l of the beam is 50 inches, okay, we're going to also calculate the axial buckling. And this is when buckling would start. And so this is going to be PY critical. And that's going to be equal to pi squared. Okay, the Young's modulus, the moment. And then divided by 4L squared. And that's going to be also be equal to uh, pi squared EBD cubed over 48 um, L squared. Okay, so there we have our equations that we need to implement. Let's go ahead and just program this in Python and optimize it. So if I bring up an editor, and I'll just edit this script to minimize this beam weight. All right, I'm going to import Gecko. If you don't have Gecko, you could just do uh, pip install Gecko in Python and we'll install the latest version of Gecko for you. All right, and then I'll go from NumPy, we'll import Pi as well. And then we'll connect, uh, create our model, we're gonna say remote equals false, so it won't use an internet connection to solve this model, it'll solve it locally. And then we have some constants. All right, our transverse load, our axial load, and also the beam length, that's gonna be 50. We also have the density of the steel. There's our yield stress. And there's our Young's modulus as well. Then we'll have some variables. Now this is going to be the beam width and then the beam depth as well. So B and D. And then we're also going to have the weight that we're going to calculate. Now I've given lower bounds to these. The only one that has a non-zero or close to zero lower bound 
is the beam width of 0.5. Let's go and do our intermediate calculations. We have the moment of inertia. We also have the compressive stress due to Px. Okay, we're going to create that as a variable. And then also uh, due to Py, we'll create that as a variable as well. All right, and then our intermediate. We're going to calculate an intermediate expression here to calculate the axial buckling load. All right, so there's our uh, Py, AB. Okay, and then equations. We're going to create some equations. These are going to be equality or inequality constraints. Now, first of all is our weight. That's the weight of the width times the depth times the length times the density. So it's a volume times the density. And we also have our stress. And then also the in the y and the x direction. And then we also know that we have to be uh, above, uh, the critical has to be above what PY experiences. So we need to be uh, strong enough to withstand that buckling load. All right, and then B has to be less than two times D. So we have some equality constraints. Those are with the double equal sign and then e inequality constraints here as well. Okay, those are all of our equations. So we have some variables. Those are the things that we're going to be able to change. We have intermediate calculations. And then we have the implicitly solved equations as well. And we need to find our objective function. And in this case, we want to minimize the overall weight. And then we want to solve. I'll use solver 3. That's the one by default. So you can just leave that out if you'd like. And then we want to solve this and then print out the weight the depth, the width, the vertical stress, the horizontal stress, and then the axial buckling load. Okay, so all of these are printed out and it'll show us our solution. Let's go ahead and just run this now. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. Okay, you can do it in IDLE or you can do this from the command line as well. So I'll change to desktop or you can uh, do this through a Jupyter Notebook. Um, many different ways to run this. All right, so I'll do beam.py. And there you can see it optimized it with the IPOP solver. And there you can see some of the results. So it chose to have this minimum width of 0.5. There you can see the weight, 3.35. And you can also see that here in the objective. Now you can see it took 27 iterations to solve and it took about 0 0.046. So in optimization, we can either guess and check these values, okay, if we wanted to try a number of different ones, we'd have to check to make sure that all of the uh, constraints are satisfied for those, and that becomes part of the feasible region where you have potential solutions. Now, you can also use an optimizer like IPOPT, or if you change it to number one, that's gonna be the APOPT solver. And what these do is they efficiently search, okay, this one said no feasible solution. So this one was not as good at trying to find a solution. You can also use other solvers as well. Okay, that one also no feasible solution. So the one that worked was the IPOPT solver in this case. So that's a, a good test is just try different solvers, figure out which one is going to work best for that particular application. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. There's additional details on the course website, and I'll just share with you that uh, link in the video description. Or if you just come here to this URL, you'll be able to see this case study along with many other applications here in the optimization course and you can also see you know this is this is, here's the beam column there are many others as well for example rocket design and others and there's also some book chapters if you want to know a little bit more about optimization this is a freely available book that's online uh, ready for you to download and access i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and hope you enjoy the optimization course.